I am going to show you how I created an interesting marble material using simple shapes in 7 different patterns. My name is Ezekiel Delaney and I have been working during the last 5 years as a professional material artist using Substance Designer to make photorealistic materials for outsourcing studios focusing on AAA game development. Now let's get started. As you can see right now we are in Substance Designer and this is the material we are going to be looking into. I have made a different amount of patterns for this one and some gold carvings into it but in this particular material what I wanted to do was showcase marble in a more unique and different way giving it more life to it and more interest overall. So we're gonna be seeing this material in two videos maybe in three but in this first one we're gonna be focusing specifically on the patterns I made. So in order to make this pattern um, work we need to come here just to our tile generator to create our main pattern. So the main pattern is gonna be a tile generator with a 10 by 5 in tiling with a square. Now the scale is set to 0 0.98 but the secret here comes later yeah so the secret comes this level maybe it's not useful here let's remove it yes it's not doing anything might have this for a test the secret comes with the blur so the blur allows us to have a small kind of bevel into these bricks as you can see which gives them thickness if i pull this backwards you're gonna see that this is just looks sharp and weird but with the blur we have a really nice thickness and shape to our bricks now this is really important that I mention this because we're going to be using it later to create a flat fill yeah and from there a flat fill to random color the flat fill to random color is going to be used mainly to do some variations in these patterns but you're going about to see it right now now this is pattern number one and yes it doesn't look simple it actually looks quite complex but why did i say that we're going to be using simple shapes if you check at the beginning of this you have a square and this is the only shape we're going to be using to make this pattern yes now i'm using the sc a scale of 0.44 and the secret comes in the splatter circular. So we can change different parameters in our splatter circular to get these results, yes. And as you can see, it can get really interesting and we can create a lot of different shapes, yes, just by changing some of these parameters. And this is one of the main, let's say, tricks we're gonna be using around this video. So in order to get this shape, what you need to do is set your pattern amount to 32. This is going to work kind of like steps at this point. As you can see that if I lower this, there's just going to add more and more squares. But if I take this to a point where there's so many squares, there's actually no space in between. These lines start to have a little more of resolution. Yes. So the more squares you have, the more resolution you will get in this. Yes, you can see it here. In fact, let's just replace one with the other to have a better result in our material. Yeah. In fact, you can actually see it here it now looks better. So for the splatter circular, what we want, it's a pattern amount of 64 with new value. Yes, a ring amount of four, and we want to change the pattern to image input so we can use our shape. After that, you wanna set your radius to 0 0.79 and a ring radius multiplier of one, followed by a spread of one as well. And we're gonna change the size. We're gonna set our X size into 0 0.09 and my Y size to 0 0.1. We're gonna set the scale to one as it should be. And after that, if I'm not mistaken, there shouldn't be any extra K changes that you need. After that, use a 2D transform to shrink the shape so that we can later crop this, yes, into having a specific shape that we can use in a tile generator. Now this tile generator has a 10 by 10 scale, yes, and it also has a scale of 0 0.8 with a rotation of 45 degrees. Yeah, that's how we managed to make this kind of like aligned in the edges. Now how are we applying this? We are applying this in two ways. First, we are going to need a blend. This blend is going to be a subtract with an intensity of 0 0.05. This is going to allow us to carve information in our bricks or marble bricks without having to destroy them so much. Now, we're going to need a mask for this. So, using the information from my flat fill, I generate a flat fill to random grayscale and then generated a histron mask with a histron scan. This is the mask that is going to be choosing where I want these shapes to appear. Yeah. At the same time, we're going to be repeating this step over and over, you see, for each pattern. Now, in case you haven't seen my basics video for Substance Designer, this is something that seems a little bit complex, but it's actually not that complex. So let's say, yes, and I'm going to go over this. Let's say this is my initial mask. Yeah. 
is here my history one can is my initial mask and i'm applying yes certain amount of detail let's say a dirt yes to my shape yeah so i'm gonna have this here and i'm gonna have a mask and after this dirt i want to apply a new detail being this new detail i clouds too yeah so if I want to use a different mask, what I would have to do is generate a new flat fill to random grayscale. Yes, and even doing that, what is going to happen is that I might overstep the information I'm already masking here. So how can we avoid that? This noodle spaghetti salad that you see here is basically the solution. So what I did here is I grabbed the same history and scan and copy it. Yes, and I pulled my intensity higher than the last node. So this is 0 0.18, so I'm gonna do 0 0.3, yes? So now I have more squares. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm to this new mask, I'm gonna subtract the previous mask. That way, voila, I have the rest of the nodes and none of them are overlapping. See, I'm applying information without overlapping them, yes, by using the same flat fill to random grayscale. So I save time and, be, and being more efficient with this. Now let's get to pattern number two, and this is gonna be a little bit more interesting for the way I did it, mainly because it could have been done in a different way, but I just like making things complicated. So I created a shape with a Gaussian pattern with a scale of 2.36. There's nothing else to change. Then I input all of this into a gradient dynamic. This gradient dynamic has a gradient orientation that is vertical with a 0 0.28 value with a clump. After that, we're gonna get a levels, yes, to pull everything down into this single line. If you wanna have the same result, you can pause the video and copy these parameters to have exactly the same. Once again, we're gonna go over and copy the splatter circular technique. Yes, in this case, using a pattern amount of four, Yes, a ring amount of two, the same pattern input that is the image to get this ring into it. We're gonna get a radius of 0 0.11, a ring multiplier of one, a spread of one, a size of 0 0.09, and a Y size of 0 0.1, and a scale of two. So as you can see, some of these parameters are pretty much the same as our initial pattern, or sorry, splatter circular here, but there's some small changes to them. You might be able to spot them later. From here, we're gonna go into a tile generator, tile it at 10 by 10 yes we're not gonna change anything the rotation you can just keep it the same or at zero it's most probably gonna be the same yes but after that you're gonna do a blur just to make all these shapes kind of like combine and then use a histone scan to transform it into this part yeah so this is like actually the secret to this because at the first of course i show you this shape but we ended up with this. And this is the magic of Substance Designer because now I can keep on producing shapes like this by just making changes just to my splatter circular. Let's give it an example. Um, so I'm gonna come here, copy this, put it here, and I don't know, let's just increase the ring amount, lower the ring amount. You're gonna see that results are gonna change a lot. Yes, look at this. Look all the results you can achieve with just this. This is the power of proceduralism and this is why I love so much Substance Designer because it allows us to do as much as we want. Look all of these results you can achieve. And all of this is not just because I know exactly how each of these nodes works. It is because I understand that in order to make something like this happen, I need to explore a lot. I, I, I had been like exploring quite a lot when I made these materials. I did a lot of exploration before jumping in this. In fact, I think that first I did these patterns and then I decided to make a marble material. So now that we have this, we are just gonna do exactly the same as we did before. We're gonna apply it with a subtract with 0 0.05 and a new mask as we did before. So now, maybe the most interesting and simple one of all these details are these steps, because these steps don't seem normal or they are kind of like if you don't know really much substance designer they're a little bit hard to check so this is what i did i created the green linear one with a tiling of 16 of 16 power my pattern free then i used a vector warp grayscale using the flat field to random color of my actual tiles in order to give them like random variations after that i applied the levels using these parameters you see on screen to generate this level of detail. I wanted my tiles to be a little bit sharper as you can see here and if I were using the initial one 
then the result was going to be way too flat, kind of like a rooftop, and I didn't want that to happen, I wanted it to be more kind of like shape and handmade. So later I just had to reuse the same technique with a subtract with an amount of 0.65 in this case, I could go higher if I want to, but in this case 0.65 was actually quite good for the gradient I wanted allowing me to make these kinds of steps in my marble tiles. Now pattern number four, it might be the simplest one of all. And again, we are using simple shapes in here. Before we just used gradients, now we are using paraboils. Yes, we are using spheres. And these spheres are really nice because it gives a really nice shape to our material. And you can see here how the roughness and the shape of these works so well in our material. So. It's just as simple as making a 20x20 20 20 tile in a tile generator with a parallel shape, then lowering the scale to 0 0.46 and having a middle size of 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. That's gonna be just enough. We don't want, like, remember this is man-made. Yes, we don't want to make some random things around this. This is supposed to be like kind of like arch base perfect material where you don't have any kind of mistake in a way. Yeah. Now, pattern number five, once again, is just simple. We are going to generate a tile generator, yes, with a 40 by 40 amount in X and Y with a square. Why? Because we are not going to be using the squares, but the lines between them. And what we are going to do is we're going to set a scale of 0 0.95. And from there, we're going to invert it. Then we rotate this and voila, we have this nice pattern of diamonds that are going around our marbles. And of course, we are subtracting this from our shape for with an intensity of 0 0.1. Now you're gonna ask me, how is that really simple shape make this so interesting? Well, the reason is two things. First, the masking. Being able to mask this in this way and not making it so repetitive helps the material kind of feel unique. But the actual secret is that some of these shapes, like this one that we are about to see, have some gold carving in it that we might get into seeing later. And this gold carving is allowing us to kind of highlight these specific shapes we want our audience to look at when they see our material. If you really check in, the patterns that have the carvings are only those who are actually quite not normal, let's say, shapes that are really interesting to see, while the other ones are a little bit like easier to spot or to realize that we have in the real world. Like for example, these kinds of spheres or these cuts and bricks or these lines. Yes, that's actually something that you might be able to see in some surfaces in the real world. Now moving forward from our fifth pattern, we're gonna go to our sixth pattern. Yes, which is this shape we have here. Now for pattern six, we're gonna use a polygon two with a tiling of one, six sides and a scale of 0 0.88. And we're using polygon two because it allows us to have this kind of gradient here that's really nice. For this, we're gonna get a minus 0 0.43 on the curve, a 0 0.27 in the gradient. From here, we're gonna get a level, so we're gonna pull in the grays towards the black to get a way better shape on this. Now, these are the parameters. If you want to see them, you can stop the video and copy them. After that, we're gonna use an edge detect with a roundness of zero and an edge width of 3.63. This is going to allow us to get all these edges that we can take them by inverted this shape. Then we're gonna blur this shape so we can get the levels and kind of like sharpen it more. We're gonna have some variation here, some irregularities, don't worry about it. It's not something like, I, I didn't try too much to fix it at that moment, but again, it works and it looks really good as well. The trick is to look it for afar. We are not gonna be looking like really close like this. So if it doesn't be seen visible from afar, that's all right. Now for the tile generator, we're doing a 10 by 10 once again. Yeah, because mainly what we're doing is we are trying to match to, to this amount on, on our tiles, on our borrow tiles, there are X amount of 10. Yeah. From there, once again, we are going to subtract it with a mask using an intensity of 0 0.1. Now, pattern number seven is, or maybe, one of the simplest of all, because it's only done with a Gaussian shape. Yeah, so we're going to use a shape, we're going to use a Gaussian pattern, and we're going to set the scale to 0 0.45, because we want to maintain the, the overall shape in our patterns. Then we're going to change our X size to 0 0.05, and our Y size to 2. Then we're going to input this into a splatter circular using a pattern amount of 6, 7 ring amounts, and we're going to change the radius to 0 0.25, with 1 in ring radius multiplier, and a spread of 1. 
Yeah, there's not much to change here except for the scale, which is set to 2. And we are not going to be changing the rotation or anything else because this point is not going to be useful. But you can see how this nice gradient that the shape has, yes, it's allowing us to kind of like make a directionality into our shape where you feel like you see that this is kind of like a circular sphere, but at the same time, all these lines are pulling you inwards. And when you get inwards, you start to realize that these lines are starting to pull you outwards. And that's the beauty of this part they created now again we're gonna use the same tile generator yes same parameters that we have also seen uh no sorry in this case we're gonna be using an amount of five by five not sure why i did that i think it's because oh yes because i wanted this pattern to be only single like again i was trying to avoid repetition so we already have some tiles that in fact three tiles three type of tiles that have one pattern in two sh different shapes yes i want to have one tile that has a single uh, shape or pattern on it yes that's why i'm doing five by five if we tile our shape on 10 by 10 and we get two shapes in one tile then if we do five by five we should get one shape in one tile yes now for the scale of this tile generator we're using a scale of 0 0.8 no rotation we are doing a small global offset of 0 0.05 and in fact I could lower a little bit more the scale because it's kind of reaching to the edges but I want this one to be kind of big. Now this information looks a little bit too soft so I got the levels and again you can copy these parameters but basically I auto level this and then I pull the whites a little more to, uh, towards the black so I can get even higher intensity. Finally this is being subtract over our shape using a value of 0 0.1. As I have promised these are seven different patterns you can build using simple shapes in Substance Designer and these are the ones I use for my marble material. Now that you have learned to make patterns with simple shapes it is time to put it to test. With other professional material artists we have created a Discord community where we we host events with anyone who is learning to make materials. These events are for free and you can join us or ask for share feedback in this server. If you want to become a material artist, you can go to the description of this video where you will find the Discord link invite, click on it and once you are in, let us know why you want to learn Substance Designer. I hope this chapter was useful for you and I will see you in our next video.